These machines perform superhuman feats. They weave kilometer-long carpets in no time at all. They crack eggs and separate the yolks from the whites millions of times a day. Or they wrap chocolate Santas perfectly, one every second. How do these things do it? Let's start with this one, the egg carousel separator. It does nothing but separate egg whites and yolks, lightning fast and efficiently. The human eye can't keep up with it, let alone a single human being. Like Chef Angelo, for example, he handles eggs all the time. How quickly and perfectly can he manage to separate, let's say, a hundred of them? Let's go! Angelo has to work quickly and precisely. That requires a lot of concentration, but he gradually loses it the longer he works. Yorks keep getting mixed up in the egg whites, all done after 11 minutes. How many eggs is that per hour? 500 eggs an hour for one person is fine. So it is, but for this machine, that output would be grounds for dismissal. Too slow. It's 60 times faster than Angelo. So this machine here cracks 29,000 eggs an hour. That's something like 500 eggs a minute. Here in Ferden, Lower Saxony, eggs are cracked open and separated for the food industry. Master of the eggs, biologist Bernhard Schnepper. He supervises the separation process. 1.5 million eggs are delivered every day. They are fed onto the machine via a conveyor belt and smashed open at lightning speed. With this machine, you basically have three products, egg white, egg yolk and whole egg. Egg yolk is the basic ingredient of mayonnaise, for example. Whole egg is egg yolk and white combined, important for large bakeries. Egg whites later go into chocolate marshmallows. But wait a minute, how does the machine separate them so quickly? Here at this point, rots trigger an impact mechanism invisible to the human eye. At 1000 frames per second, we see that a knife hits the egg from below. Yolk and egg white drop out. The whole thing takes only an eighth of a second in real time. Yes, the function of the egg breaking machine can best be explained with the help of the breaking tool. The breaking tool is now loaded with an egg. The blade is released and cracks the egg. At the same time, the mechanism does this. And you can see that the double blade keeps the eggshells apart. But how does the machine separate the egg in comparison to a human who needs just under eight seconds to do it? Somehow the yolk ends up on top and the white on the bottom. The high-speed shots show how the yolk and the egg white first end up together in the upper cup. Then only the egg white runs off into the lower cup. How does that work? That's where the mechanics of the machine come into play, which moves the yolk and opens up the hole so the egg white can drop down into the cup. So you can see here we have a separated yolk and down here a super clean egg white. And this scanner decides what goes where. Once the yolk is clean, the machine lowers the cup and it flows out. To ensure that the delicate yolk remains intact, it is blown into the chute by compressed air. And so gently that it keeps its shape. Meanwhile, the entire egg white has landed in the lower cup due to the rotation of the machine. But who would have thought it? Even the machine makes mistakes sometimes. There, for example, a yolk in the egg white. No problem, they both end up in the whole egg chute, which is basically just scrambled eggs. Before the raw egg is pumped off for further processing, it has to pass through a control basin. You have the egg white here, the whole egg here, and here the egg yolk. And you can see the function of the holes here is to take out the large shells. There are even some real life employees for that. They also make sure that no other unwanted substances are processed with the raw eggs mixture. A large proportion of the separated eggs are processed on site into powder for the food industry using hot air and nozzles. Also popular, giant bags of liquid egg for large bakeries and pasta manufacturers. 
So that is it, the high-speed egg yolk separator. If you think that was crazy, just watch, it gets even weirder. Chocolate Santas perfectly wrapped every year. Delicious. These things haven't been wrapped by people for a long time. This machine does it, precisely and crease-free. And that's almost unbelievable because wrapping is not easy. You don't believe it? Here's the proof. We asked passers-by to wrap the chocolate Santas in their original silver foil. And... I think I really messed up back here. There's a hole in it. It does look a bit different when I do it. First, you have to wrap it tightly. Secondly, closing it at the back is a pain. And thirdly, mine's open at the top and bottom. Exactly. Lots of problem areas, lots of fiddling. But not for them. The hollow figure foil wrapping machine packs everything that is made of chocolate and hollow inside, no matter what shape. Christian Wichmann sells chocolate wrapping machines worldwide for a manufacturer of special machines. This is the LB5 hollow figure foil wrapping machine with an output of 33 units per minute and a weight of 3.5 tons. This machine is the fastest on the world market. This machine wraps 33 Santas per minute, despite the complex wrapping technique on Santa's back. It looks best when there's no silver to be seen on these folds here, and these transitions in the foil are in a straight line. But wait a minute, how does the machine do that without crushing the chocolate? Loading is done by hand, the tin foil comes from the roll, a laser decides where to cut. How the foil is applied? Hard to tell, but these first steps are the decisive ones. The foil always has to be at right angles to the product. If the product lies on it at an angle, it can never be wrapped neatly. The pressure wouldn't be right. The hand movements seem simple, so how does the machine do it faster and better? In slow motion it becomes clear. The machine doesn't wrap like we would. It presses. And it does this with the help of various parts that press against the millimetre-thin chocolate figure from two sides without denting it. Yes, the machine has a shape in it, like a Father Christmas, because of the moulded parts that are in here. And that's why the foils can be pressed on very well in all areas at the foot and the head ends. Every chocolate figure needs its own moulded parts, whether it's the Chocolate Man or the Easter Bunny. These graphic artists therefore make virtual three-dimensional chocolate figures. A milling machine produces the negatives from plastic blanks. Their cavities are minimally larger than the chocolate figure, so that the wrapping machine can press the parts together without breaking them. The biggest challenge for the machine is, of course, folding the wrapper so that the printed side doesn't face inwards towards the chocolate, because the lacquers are not completely food safe and therefore mustn't come into contact with the chocolate. The trick is to cut off the excess foil on Santa's back and fold the excess together. By hand, the result looks anything but elegant. But the principle was developed for the machine. It cuts off the excess with a knife and joins the end of the foil with the help of small wedges that move back and forth. And how are the head and foot ends folded neatly? On the machine it's hard to see with the human eye and by hand it looks rather clumsy. Clearly visible in slow motion, four targeted pushes and a sticker on the end. After all, we want our Santas as wrinkle-free as possible. By hand? Dreadful. I don't think anyone would buy him. The machine has a final station for this, with two moulded parts padded on the inside. They press the foil on gently and without any wrinkles. As you can see from the result, our machines can wrap much better than by hand. By the way, Germans eat about 100 million chocolate Santas every year, all of which are wrapped by a machine. Hard to believe, but it gets even more extreme, thanks to this. 
this mega weaving machine. It processes about 600 kilometers of yarn for 100 square meters of carpet and knots a carpet loop in milliseconds. 100 square meters in only four hours. But in the past, weaving used to be quite time consuming. The classic principle, crossing warp and weft threads at right angles with the help of a small stick. Then push everything together with a comb. It's sometimes still taught at school, but not very many people seem to remember how it's done. So you have to go through it like this or what? Well, I'm not really very talented. Maybe it's better that there are machines for this. But how does the giant monster work that spits out meters of carpet in record time without anyone having to lift a finger? Andre Breaker oversees the process, and he's a bit proud of what this machine can actually do. The machine threads the yarns 170 times a minute. In the past, people pushed the yarn through by hand. They probably needed a minute for each thread, and this machine is 170 times faster. 170 times per minute means 170 threads in a row. That's about 17 centimeters of carpet per minute. But wait a minute. How can the machine pull the threads through so quickly? It replaces hands and the small sticks on the school loom with giant steel needles. The steel needle pulls a thin thread through a series of taut rows of yarn. Similar to the human hand, the steel needle passes the weft thread to its counterpart right in the middle. This movement is repeated endlessly with the same precision. To weave about 50 centimeters of carpet, around 400 individual mechanical movements are necessary. The threads run together and can be raised and lowered individually by the machine, depending on the carpet pattern. But how does this become a stable carpet? The trick? Alternating threads are inserted from the side, which ensure the cohesion of the carpet. In technical jargon, they're known as the weft threads. In the high-speed shot, you can see how the steel needle grips the weft thread. The principle is the same as when weaving by hand. Threads are laid over the crosswise rows of yarn from the side. To ensure that all the threads are woven together in a stable manner, different rows of yarn are raised and lowered alternately depending on the pattern. Each thread is pushed up by the comb at lightning speed. This is how the woven structure is created. After each weft, the thread is cut off at the end and the needle picks up the weft again. By the way, the carpet the machine is weaving here is part of a large order for a bank. 5,000 square meters of boring grey loop pile carpet. And sometimes even this mat machine makes a mistake. But that's more to do with the yarn, because if it's too dry, it breaks. The machine then stops automatically and Andre has to enter the bobbin maze. With 1,400 bobbins in monotonous grey-black, it's a real game of patience. And now I have to look in the creel to see exactly what's going on. Looking for a needle in a haystack? In this case, a broken thread on a bobbin. Here's the problem. There's a broken thread on this bobbin. Now I take the other end and knot it together. Then, Andre has to thread the yarn back into the machine, with the reassuring realization, a machine that's 100% perfect has not yet been invented. No camera sees as well as the human eye. I'm permanently busy checking the textile surface and the machine can't possibly do that on its own, not even in 100 years. After 12 days of weaving, this large order is now finished. Around 300,000 square meters of carpet are woven here every year. That's the equivalent of about 60 football pitches. A really crazy machine. <laughs>